Here we are at uh, Fort Union in uh, New Mexico on the Santa Fe Trail and uh, very historic and we're going to take a tour and talk about that. That way too. Yeah. So, which path do you want to take? Uh, the one that's traveled. <laughs> Fort Union. Or well, what remains of Fort Union. North of Santa Fe on the Santa Fe Trail. Back in the 1850s, this would have been a bustling hub of activity of, from soldiers to pioneers. In the jail. What would you call it? What would you call it in the North there? I can't the remember. brig. Brig. Yeah. The pokey. Crime and punishment on an army post. This would not be fun being in this prison here. I don't know if we're allowed to really go off Probably the trail. Cold in the wintertime and hot in the summertime. Yep. That's pretty cool. So this is all adobe, original adobe. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? Make out the what it says 6,885 feet, yeah, 6,835 feet above tide water, August 1867. I guess that's what they used as a term for above, above sea level, level. tide water, yeah. This would have been the home for the officers. You and I would have lived in the shitholes on the other side of the fort Except as enlisted. An <laughs> <laughs> you were an army officer, that's right. You were a captain. You'd be living over here, Captain. <laughs> captain, captain Westbrook. Yeah. Kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd be on the other side living with the enlisted folks and <laughs> in the enlisted hovel down, down yonder. Yeah. <laughs> Still the officers' quarters here of the fort. Each you can see the foundations laid out and each of them with their individual hearth or fireplace. More of the fort out yonder. The brig further off. Here's the uh, commissary of the general store location of the fort and trading posts for buttons and beer and food, soldiers, civilians, and Native American Indians were able to come here and, and trade and buy goods as needed within the fort. Here we're looking at the quartermaster's headquarters Basically, the fort commandant and supply for the all the inhabitants of the fort. This would have all been administrative officers, supply, overlooking the prairie. Seeing how the immenseness of this fort. You can see how the adobe walls are corroding and being held up 
by trusses. Fort was officially abandoned in the 1890s, so it's been empty for more than 100 years here. Here's a view of the entire map of the fort. And we just walked through the officers row and the depot officers and quartermasters. And now we're gonna check out this area over here that is the transportation corral, the commissary storehouses, and the, all the back end stuff that makes a military base function. And that's what we're gonna look at now. No more hazardous than working in the engine room of a Navy ship with That's 600 true. PSI. <laughs> or above it. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I work. <laughs> <laughs> you may get the, that shot you like of these window views it's here. High, though. I have to stand on, a, on that bench. No, you come right here. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. You get that is like an engine. This looks like the where the, the corrals were for the horses, the stables. Uh -huh. This is what this looks like over here. Okay. This is the back end of where the stables and the commissary and all that stuff it takes to feed an army. It is pretty, pretty remote in 2023. Imagine how remote this was in the 1850s and 1860s when this was really the Wild West and wilderness. And there's a rabbit. There he goes. Big this fort was in its heyday. The adobe walls are definitely showing their age, held up by guy wires and support beams. Imagine how crowded and noisy this would have been in the 1850s, 1860s. The hustle and bustle of a um, military base. Here's the, uh, the Fort's blacksmith shop, the forges. Wagons. wagons. Definitely blacksmiths back then did more than just shoe horses. They were, did a lot of wagon wheels and would do all of the customized metal tools that a base or people would require. Everything from axes to chisels, all the wagon wheels, crowbars. So blacksmiths did way more than just shoe horses. Santa Fe Trail, right through the fort, or at least up to it. Well, this is actually the uh, I guess for lack of a better term, the septic tank for the, uh, the fort. This was, uh, they're calling it the privy, but really, really kind of like, I guess the latrine. All of this here would have been stinking a high heaven. But now we're on actually old part of the Santa Fe Trail. Pioneers would be going on from Missouri all the ways to Santa Fe.
driving cattle, pioneers, wagon trains, screaming kids and animals. Yeah, the Santa Fe Trail passed through here and you can still see remnants of the uh, wagon wheel ruts low but still you can see the remnants all along through here where tens of thousands of people passed up and down this prairie along this kind of like rut that goes through the grass very faintly some areas it's more profound than others with deeper ruts but here is very faint over the centuries so the u.s army was sent here back in the 1850s to kind of keep order uh, between the pioneers the settlers and the native americans and that just really stirred up the shit pot so to speak between the army the natives the settlers business and interest and whatnot so you had 10,000 American Indians once lived out here and their traditional way of life on this vast ocean of grass uh, was on the move and they followed the buffalo herds and camped where scarce water was to be found throughout this whole region obviously with the army fort here and white man moving west, things were bound to change.